Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus for the last episode of this series, episode 5 of 5 on volcanoes. I'm Trace, and so far this week we've talked about what exactly is magma, what's the difference between magma and lava, we've talked about what causes volcanic eruptions, the different types of them, how we predict them, ancient perceptions of these eruptions, and how that's informed modern volcanology. We've even talked about how volcanoes can affect the entire planet throughout our history and may have even allowed us to be able to be here in the first place. Think of all those things you've missed if you haven't watched all four of those episodes, so go back and watch them. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of the episodes of Test Tube Plus coming up next week as well. I can't tell you what they are, but they're going to be great. And also, today, we're talking about space volcanoes, you guys. Space volcanoes. The Earth is great and all, but there are volcanoes in space. Well, okay, not like floating around. They're on planets in space. Space is where volcanoes tend to get really crazy. The largest volcano on Earth is Mauna Loa, right? We all knew that, of course. It's a shield volcano. It's about 120 kilometers across. It's gigantic, but it's child's play in comparison to volcanoes out in the solar system. Earth's volcanoes are puny. Mars, as a planet, half our size, roughly, has an extinct volcano called Olympus Mons, which is 550 kilometers across. It's like 16 times larger than Mount Everest. It's humongous. This is a volcano, you know, just a volcano. No big deal. Evidence of volcanoes exists on most planets in our solar systems. Uh, it's hard to see all of them, of course, because some of them are covered by thick atmospheres, but there's evidence on Mercury, Venus, Earth, our moon, Jupiter's moon Io, Saturn's moon's Titan and Enceladus, Neptune's moon Triton, and maybe Mars, Venus, and under the seas of Europa and Pluto like volcanic activity now. Not like ancient volcanic activity. I mean, like, it might be happening. Volcanoes, by the way, in case you don't remember from earlier, are an opening on the surface of a planet or moon that allows material warmer than its surroundings to escape from its interior. And this is where we get into the technicality of scientific discussion. Warmer than its surroundings. Think about that for a second, because we're talking about space, and it's cold in space, so cryovolcanoes are a thing. So it's frozen plumes of ammonia, methane, or, you know, just water that explodes out of the surface of these planets or moons because it's warmer than the surface material of that body. On Titan, there's a volcano called Doom Mons. They name them all Mons because it's Latin for mountain. But it's named after Mount Doom. It's Doom Mons, <laughs> named after Lord of the Rings, Tolkien, Frodo. Okay, don't worry about it. In 2010, Cassini flew past Titan and spotted Doom Mons and thought, that could be an ice volcano. What happens is something escapes the pressure inside of Titan, probably water, potentially hydrocarbons, maybe ammonia, and it vaporizes. Because remember, from earlier, we've talked about this before, there's a relationship between pressure and temperature in a closed system. So even though it might actually be really, really cold on Titan, the fact that all of the pressure underneath the ground exists allows it to maintain a warmer temperature, and it vaporizes as it explodes into a very low pressure environment. And it could be shooting methane up into the atmosphere. And that's just one example. On Enceladus, Triton, and Pluto, they may have some of these cryovolcanoes, spewing gases from the interior of the planet into the exterior of the planet, forming atmospheres and shooting materia deuterious out into space. And that's not that different from lava and magma, even though the thing itself is different, and it can change those planets forever. Most volcanoes that we see in our solar system, however, are extinct. Olympus Mons is huge, but it's extinct. That's not the case on Venus. Venus has over 1,600 major volcanoes or volcanic features. They're usually shield volcanoes, you know, the oozy kind, the effusive kind of eruption. Most, again, are extinct, but some may still be active. The thing about Venus is, unlike Earth, there are no plate tectonics. There's also no water in the air on Venus. It's too hot. The clouds are made of sulfuric acid. Pressure at sea level on Venus is equivalent to water pressure one kilometer below the surface of the ocean. It's not exactly the best place to hang. But that being said, high pressure plus no plate tectonics means that there's a lot of oozy volcanoes. There's not a lot of explosions, so it's harder to spot them. Regions where the crust gets stretched, think of it like a boil in your skin that 
breaks open and it starts to ooze. Data, of course, is limited because of the sulfuric acid atmosphere of Venus. But Venus Express detected excess heat from two and a half million years ago, which is like yesterday in geological terms, and they found that that might be because there are volcanoes spewing sulfur dioxide and adding to the atmosphere of Venus. Isn't that crazy? Volcanoes in space are like amazing, but Jupiter's moon Io is the trophy of the solar system when it comes to this stuff. Jupiter's moon Io's got volks, that's all I'm saying. In 1979, Voyager spotted a volcanic plume on Jupiter's moon Io, confirming that Io was volcanically active, something we thought for a long time. In fact, it is the most active in our solar system. Io has hundreds of volcanic events, and some shoot volcanic snow miles into the sky, and some ooze lava out. There are a whole bunch of different types. The thing is, it's a little different on Io. Io is really, really cold. NASA says Io is zero degrees in a warm spot and like negative 150 C elsewhere. But above the volcanoes, it's sizzling. And the thing about Io is also, it's different than Earth's volcanoes. Earth's are based on tectonic plates and magma easing up through you know, the Earth's crust, like we've talked about this whole episode. But in Io, Gravity keeps squashing the planet. Jupiter has a lot of gravity, and Io is very small, so it keeps getting squished like a stress ball. And the pressure and movement of all of that stuff explodes onto the surface with volcanoes finding weak spots all over it. It's under this just crazy ball of hell. And space volcanoes are super cool for all sorts of different reasons, from cryovolcanoes to squeezy hell balls. This is awesome, right? Why should you care about that? other than them being cool. Because one, volcanoes tell us the history of our planet. If they don't have a lot of craters on them, it's probably because there was recent volcanic activity that covered up any impacts. And you know, we also needed to know how Earth got a crust. And by looking at these other planets, we can figure out what's normal and what's abnormal and how they got their crusts. And that's probably how we got ours. Two, it tells us the history of our solar system. Again, back to the crater thing. If in early solar system, there was a lot of bombardment from asteroids. So we can learn how these planets formed and how they all got volcanoes in that formation process. Fewer craters, again, lava covered up the shifting crust covered up the bombardment. Three, there's also heat plus molecular nutrients plus water. This is the big one. Because when you have heat and you have nutrients, something we know volcanoes have both of, and then you get water, we have ingredients for life as we know it. And NASA cares because on at least one of these places, there's also water. Io, not have water. It's just this crazy hell ball. Another Jupiter moon, Europa, has water, potentially. Saturn's moon, Enceladus, has water, potentially. If Io is being squashed around by Jupiter's gravity, potentially Europa and Enceladus are being squashed around, generating their own heat. So that would mean we'd have volcanoes, which would create nutrients and heat, and water, right? NASA's mission, in part, is to look for life in the universe. Because of these three things put together, life could exist near volcanoes. And we have an analog for that here on Earth. On Earth, at the bottom of the ocean, in this very high pressure, very difficult environment, there are volcanoes. And around those volcanoes are exotic and hardy forms of life because warmth, nutrients, and energy. Exobiologists believe that space has volcanoes too, and thus there might be life near those volcanic vents. Extraterrestrial volcanoes serve the same purpose as terrestrial ones. They release heat from inside the planet, they reshape the crust of their planet, they could help create the atmosphere of a planet, but also might be harboring extraterrestrial life. And it's not just here in our solar system. Here we can look for visible plumes and heat signatures and atmospheric particles, and we've learned to do all of those things, and we can extrapolate to extrasolar volcanoes, which we've spotted recently. 55 Cancri E, an exoplanet spotted 40 light years from Earth, might be volcanically active, says a recent study. They spotted temperature swings of over 1,500 degrees Celsius from like 3,000 all the way down to 1,500, and they could be volcanoes. It's too hot to support life. It's too big to support life as we understand it. But again, heat plus nutrients plus water equals life. And we now know how to look for all of those things in space. And all because we started studying volcanoes and because volcanoes helped us 
build our own society and changed our planet and shaped our solar system. They might be destructive and dangerous and inconvenient holdovers from an early Earth that we would just love to get rid of because of their giant zits on the face of our planet. But come on! Volcanoes are incredible. I hope you think so too after listening to this episode of Test Tube Plus. Let us know down in the comments what you thought of this series. Also, keep coming back here for more Test Tube Plus. Please subscribe if you enjoy the show. Come find us on Twitter. You can find the show at Test Tube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez if you want to talk anything science or, you know, whatever. Music. I like music. Blue skies. I don't know. Whatever you want. Also, if you like this show here on YouTube, you should check out the audio podcast. It's a whole different experience. You get all five of the episodes squished into one. If you missed any of the episodes this week or any other week, our associate producer Blair puts them all into playlists for you so you can find them on YouTube. So there are all sorts of different ways to check out our show. Again, let us know down in the comments what you think. Thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus. We'll see you next time. <laughs>